Good morning, everyone. I'm John Amodio. I'm chairman of uh, SCORE on Staten Island. Uh, I welcome you to today's uh, webinar. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank Richmond County Savings Bank for uh, putting this, for sponsoring it. And uh, especially I thank uh, Morty Glazer for being our presenter today. SCORE, if uh, I believe you all know, is a not-for-profit organization, we're all volunteers, and we provide all of this uh, free of charge. We are here at SCORE to help you if you have any questions, problems in trying to start your business, grow your business, um, and um, we have uh, with us, uh, as I said today, Morty Glazer, You've been involved, you've been invited to a number of webinars over the last few months with this pandemic. And a lot of them have been dealing with the marketing. Uh, today, we, we're taking just a little bit different twist. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a form of selling, especially using the um, Amazon and eBay stores. There, there are others available too. Morty will go over those things with you, but uh, I, I thank you for this, and we're going to be putting on more webinars, but it looks like with this pandemic, things are going to be changing for us again, and hopefully uh, by the fall, we may be able to do some live presentations, uh, live meaning you know, web, web workshops, so that we could uh, touch in the flesh. So uh, with that, um, I'd like to tell you some uh, what, what we're going to be doing today. First of all, your uh, screens are going to be muted. Morty, if you could move one slide for me, please. Okay. Secondly, um, I'd like you to please use the Q&A versus the chat. You're going to get copies of the slides for all the ones that have attended. And there will be a brief survey that will be um, presented at the end of this uh, webinar that I'd like for you to do and complete and send back to us. Uh, we will be recording this uh, webinar so that uh, we will then post it uh, to our uh, website and you will be able to uh, look at it again if you need to or want to or want to tell somebody else to come for it. I would appreciate that you um, you do use the uh, Q&A and we will answer the questions at the end as opposed to uh, interrupting the speaker as he goes along. With that, I'd like to return, turn it over to Morty who will, um, Morty, by the way, uh, has quite an uh, uh, experience in his life that uh, he shares. And I'm very pleased that he is doing this with us today he will um, tell us a little about himself so that you have an idea of uh, what, he, what he can do. And uh, rather than me botch it up and say it in the wrong ways, I've asked him to uh, uh, introduce himself. So with that, Morty, if I could, please uh, take over the screen and, uh, and take over the program. Good morning, everybody. My name is Morty Glazer. Um, I'll try to be short because I have to show a lot of slides and I'm trying to squeeze a lot of information uh, within the hour and hour and a half that I have. Uh, just to tell you in general, and I spoke to uh, about it before, you know, to really learn Amazon, you need at least like 35, 40 hours if you know social media or SEO, otherwise you have to add another 10 hours. So. We have only like an hour and a half. I'll try my best at least to give you tips, uh, which will be important if tomorrow you decide to open a store and you want to subcontract to somebody to do for you some work, you understand what they're doing. Because otherwise you can find yourself in the dark and you never know who to trust. Uh, I see people that are promising the world uh, thousands of people come to the store and they will buy and they do, you know, miracles. 
but at the end, nothing happened. So I'm trying to give you the tips that will allow you to evaluate uh, other people in you know, quotations if you want to subcontract the work or you, you learn it yourself. Uh, my background, I have over 40 years of experience in uh, computer technology engineering. I am graduate from my uh, engineering school, electronics. I also have an MBA degree and I took many, many courses on digital technology. Some people ask me, oh, you're too old, how do you know all this stuff? And I say, I never stopped to learn all my life. I continue and continue uh, to learn. Still today, I'm learning new things. Every day there is new things in this technology and I have to update and do a lot of work you know, even to, you know, for example, this presentation that I uh, gave it today, most of the slides I have it like for about three years, I have to go over and change like 50% of them because technology change a lot of things. And that's maybe the bad part that you constantly have to work and prepare stuff. It's not like something you can uh, keep it for 10 or 20 years, maybe for a few months. Uh, before we start, I want just to give you a little bit, you know, introduction, what we are going to talk about today. First of all is Amazon. Amazon is the largest store in the world. And it's amazing that two guys out of a garage started, you know, Amazon about 26, 27 years ago when they start to sell, stock, you know, books. I started at that time when Amazon started to sell books eBay started later, but they're big, but they didn't reach the volume of Amazon. And we'll talk about this later. What kind of items pays to sell on eBay? What about Amazon and eBay or just eBay? There's another store that I want to mention. I don't know if you're familiar, Etsy is mainly uh, home, uh, people that do things in home, art. But today they sell everything. I have a customer that sell uh, skin care, you know, products. And I found out Etsy also has those items. So I would recommend not to ignore, you know, Etsy, to look at Etsy, the website and see what they're selling. In general, to run three stores per month is about a hundred, hundred twenty dollars per month, uh, thirty to forty dollars each store. You pay commission, but only if you sell the item. If you don't sell, you don't pay the commission. Then I mentioned e-commerce. I will mention other uh, e-commerce sites like, uh, you, you know, um, what's it called? It. Uh, sorry, I'll come back to it. I'll go now to next uh, slide, how to get started on Amazon. By the way, I will emphasize my speech on Amazon. Like I said, it's the largest store. If you know Amazon, you'll know eBay. If you know eBay, you will not know Amazon. It's like this, there is a say, if you know how to sell in New York, you can sell any place in the world. So the same thing on e-commerce. Amazon is very complex, but it's easy. You have to read the instructions and follow. If you don't follow, you'll be suspended. Amazon, don't play games, okay? You have to be very careful and I'll go over, you know, later on about it. What do you need in order to uh, start in you know, Amazon? You need a bank account, the routing number, account number, you need credit card, you need ID, okay? You need tax information, tax ID, if you're with a corporation, social security is okay, phone number and address. And Amazon checks all this stuff because they want to have reliable sources. If you don't give those items, you'll not be able to open the store. You will open it and a day later it will be canceled. Now, why to sell an Amazon, like I mentioned before, is the largest store in the world. There's a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of vendors. There's a lot of competition. 
I'll go over about the competition later on. But Amazon, it's a well-known brand. It has an excellent customer service. They care for the customers and not the vendors. If you are aware what's going in the market, in the, in the media, Amazon is out of fire for already over a year under Congress investigations and do all kind of stuff that I don't want to go over it to waste the time, but you can search on the internet. You find that do unbelievable things against the vendors. They can take your item, copy it, and sell it on their own, for example. The other things that uh, it's really uh, very, uh, you know, desirable to be on Amazon, it's a high volume of customers. They bring millions and millions of people all over the world. The other advantage of Amazon, I didn't mention here, Amazon has uh, many countries that they have over their warehouses. They have sites that are dedicated to different countries. For example, Germany, uh, UAE, uh, Austria, England. So it's open you the door to sell in many countries. Of course, you have to ship the items to overseas, but we'll talk, we'll talk about it later on. So this is a big advantage that if you are not successful in the United States, you might be successful in uh, England, for example. Let me go to the next one. Okay. Now, I would assume that everybody buys from Amazon or is searching for items. Uh, so you have a broad, you know, a picture, what can you get from Amazon? And how you, how you find the items or the product you want to buy on Amazon, you search, okay? How you search it, either you put a description on the search bar or the keywords. Uh, sometimes you have links in social media. You can be in Facebook, Twitter, any place, LinkedIn, and somebody will advertise or will talk about his product on uh, Amazon and you'll find the link to Amazon. Also, when you search in Google, you'll get results. A lot, Amazon spend a lot of money to advertise the good vendors on Amazon and you'll find a link that's, that will say Amazon. You go to YouTube, the same thing. Uh, YouTube is owned by Google. So a lot of videos, a lot of advertisers are directing customers to Amazon. There are millions of blocks in, in the, uh, in, on the internet. There are landing pages and people put a page just for information with a link to Amazon in order to, maybe in order to monetize it. We'll talk about this later. And then of course, word of mouth. People tell their friends, I bought something in Amazon, which or word of mouth is the antique way of, uh, you know, referring customers to a vendor. Uh, I just put here a slide, you know, just show Google, you have Google search, you have Amazon, the bar that you can put the information, the keyword or, or uh, the title or, or show description and you'll find the item that you are looking for. Now, when you get the results, usually every item has what we call ASIN. ASIN is Amazon serial number, okay? Like you have UPC, the barcode in products, here in European, ISBA. Uh, Amazon goes by ASIN, and they usually, they will, if somebody comes with a UPC number, they will convert to ASIN. If ASIN is not available, you they will open, you'll give you a number, will send you a number. Okay, in the bottom here, it just, I put a short, you know, uh, image that you put the product ID, that's your part number, or you put the ASIN number, the product name, and the brand name of the product. 
And that's the way that you load the items to Amazon store. There are other functions, you put the price, you put the quantity available, but I just, to show you, it's very easy. It's like a, a form that you fill information. Finding Amazon best seller. This is a very good tool. If you are looking to open a store in Amazon and you want to know how your competitors are doing, what they are selling, if you look at the slide on the left side, it says best sellers. And then you have down by department and you have a long list of items, which is updated sometimes two, three times a day, depending on the seller. In a prime day, will be updated like every 10 minutes. And for a vendor, it's a good information because if you want tomorrow to sell, uh, for example, uh, a 65 inches Sony TV, and you, if it's on the best sellers, it's it's indication that some other people are selling it. Maybe your price is better, or maybe you will offer the same price and you take a chance to sell your TV. Once you start, you know, to load the items into Amazon, you're in a page or in a section that called Seller Central. This is like the main gate in, to Amazon to sell items. Consumer does not see it. You get a password, username, and password, and you enter Seller Central. Uh, in Seller Central, whatever I showed you before, you add the items, description, prices, uh, payment information, everything goes in the seller central. When you are in seller, in seller central, you have two options, to be a regular vendor, no question asked, you just load the items and Amazon will charge you the monthly fee and you, are, you have a store on Amazon. FBA, it's a fulfillment by Amazon. The advantages and disadvantages. The FBA, you don't have to worry about inventory. You don't have to pay insurance for your warehouse. You don't have you don't need employees for your inventory. You don't need a lot of things. It cuts the overhead. You can tell your vendor to ship it direct to Amazon warehouse. You get a, a special code. And Amazon knows what to do with the package. They will load the item to your store automatically. You don't have to do anything, but it's pricey. It's not cheap. In order to be an FBA, you have to have a minimum of 35% net profit. Otherwise, you'll not be able to make it because the charges are unbelievable. Now, another disadvantage of FBA if a customer returns the merchandise, Amazon is going to charge you for the shipping. If it costs Amazon because of the value $3, they'll charge you $20. Uh, they, they, they charge arm and leg for every step. And they're not secrets. Everything is a chart and you'll get a bill for all this stuff. Uh, also, there is no like paperwork when it's FBA because everything you see on the internet, what Amazon shipped, what they sold, they don't give you the uh, vend the customer's names or phone numbers, which is another disadvantage, disadvantage in general for Amazon. Vice versa, eBay, you get the email address, you get the address, everything. Uh, FBA, you don't know an address. When you ship direct, in seller vendor, vendors, you get the address, no email, just the address. You get the uh, Amazon email. Now, for somebody that just starting, you know, Amazon, no matter how much money you have to spend or to invest, don't start FBA. Build, first of all, a reputation. And I'll explain you why. When you ship 
an item from your warehouse, from your kitchen, doesn't make difference from where, okay? You can have a leaflet inside with your phone number, address, all the information. So if the customer have a question, he can call you direct. You start to build reputation. One person brings new persons and you build an email list. Uh, with FBA, you can't build email lists because they don't give you the information. Now, Amazon is well aware about it. They're afraid, always afraid to uh, lose customers. And that's the reason they charge a lot of money for FBA because they have full control on FBA. Next thing, I want to talk about product reviews. Every product that you ship either from your warehouse or it goes through FBA, you have to request a review. You cannot pay a customer to put you a good review. If Amazon will catch you, they will suspend you without any mercy immediately. So I know when I buy from Amazon, I buy from Amazon different things. I only look for four or five stars. And I look the number of ratings, uh, the questions, the answers, depend on the item. If I buy $2 item, I don't look at this, but I'm looking on the reviews. And usually I want to see at least five positive reviews. The goal is also zero negative reviews because you see a lot of vendors, they are late with delivery, they have complaints about quality, and usually Amazon after two, three complaints, they suspend you. So they don't ask you any question, you just suspend. You have to understand Amazon is everything automatic there. They, they have excellent uh, reputation for automation. The computer knows better than the, the employees in Amazon. They see negative reviews, two, three times, suspend. Any mistake, they suspend. Sometimes their system makes a mistake. And what happens is it takes a half a year to a year till they renew your license to sell on Amazon. They're very bureaucratic. They don't answer fast to vendors. As I told you, they'll answer fast to customer, but not to vendor. Their mentality is to take care of the customers. They are the ones that bring in the money. The vendors don't bring money. That's what they believe, and there is nothing to argue. This is the theory that was built by Jeff Bezos. Today is not the chairman anymore, but from the beginning, that's what he said. We have to take care of the customer. I don't know if you have experience, but if something is wrong, or I got a shipment that disappeared, they send me the next day a new one, no ask a question, I said, if for some reason the first shipment will pop up, keep it, we don't need it. By the way, Amazon is very, very uh, concerned about returns to their warehouse. They don't have the people to take the item and to put back in shell. Sometimes the item damage, they have to repack it. They usually auction it. They put in a container and people are buying We'll talk about it later on. The next option, how to sell on Amazon is a private label. This is the ideal way to sell on Amazon, but not everybody has this uh, knowledge or have the capability to design or to be creative to come with an idea to sell something on Amazon. But it's not easy to build a private label and explain you how. For example, let's say you buy uh, 10 pencils, which all of them are black color. Okay, a a Amazon assign ASIN for these black pencils. And you want to have pencils with your own label. You go to manufacturer, or a distributor and say, look, I want to buy a thousand pencils, but I want them black and white. The minute that you made them black and white, it's your private label. 
and Amazon will accept it. So you reduce your competition. If you have people that like the black and white more than the white or black alone, you'll get more business because this is a private label. And people, for some reason, customers like the private label. I maybe gave you uh, not the ideal in a sample about pencils, but for example, uh, I bought for myself uh, a bell, you know, uh, ring bells. If you check in on Amazon, you'll see they're offering like 10, 15, 20 different ring bells, but all of them look the same. They're coming from China, different colors. So one, some of them, is, instead of squares, they're round, they're rectangular, but they're coming from the same manufacturer from China. But each one is a private label because private label keeps you in a category that you are like a sole source, for example, for the square ring bell or the black pens, black and white pencils, which some people go for it. Now, you cannot take an item for, a, I go back to the pencils uh, and you copy them and you say, this is my private label, because then you violate copyrights. Amazon looks at private label as a copyright item. Although you don't copyright it, but for their store is like a sole source. You cannot say, if they call the uh, item, let's say ASIN 1000, to call it also ASIN 1000, uh, you, you can, Put the same description and sell it, it's fine, but you cannot try to manipulate like this is another private label. And again, you violate the private label, the pattern, all this stuff, it's forbidden, you'll be suspended right away. No mercy about it. Now, another issue that it sounds cheap, but at the end it might costly if you have problems with quality and returns. I just put here in the information, uh, per, you know, to keep Amazon for months is thirty nine ninety nine. It's not the end of the world, and unlimited items you can have thousands of items from thirty nine ninety nine, and you have unlimited categories. Uh, that's the reason you see some people like supermarket, like a hardware store, they sell everything they can put their hands on. Now, in the beginning, if you don't want to uh, spend a $39.99, you're not sure, you can sell per item, 99 cents per item. Of course, in addition, you sell, I mean, you, you're being charged for referral fees. The Amazon tax commissions, you can't leave from 39.99 or 99 cents per item. And they are not cheap, uh, those commissions. Like I said, like I mentioned before, uh, being on, uh, in uh, a private label or, you know, Amazon FBA, it costs more. You need to make profit 30, 40%. Now, not everybody can make 30, 40%. Some, I know a lot and I had customers that try to be smart, say, okay, in the beginning, I'll not make money. Doesn't work with Amazon. You have to make money, At least, even a little bit. You have to sell because nobody will feel bad for you because tomorrow you'll have another competitor. There are non-stop competitors on uh, Amazon, like you do, I do, and million other people, you go to the best sellers, you see what sells on Amazon, you check the social media. So everybody has this information for free and easy to get. So be careful about this, always make profit, even if you make 10 cents, but don't try to uh, beat the system and say, I'm, not, I'm going to lose money. The only person that willing to lose money is Amazon. Amazon now, it's a, like I mentioned before, it's under lawsuit. They took products 
okay, and I had a customer, he said, you know, we want to sell it because when they see somebody who sells a lot on Amazon, they said, what about if we will sell, you know, the uh, items? If you look sometimes on items on Amazon, you'll see that the shipper is Amazon and the seller is Amazon, both. Because usually you'll see shipper is ABC company or Amazon is the store. But with Amazon, when they sell and the buy and sell under their name, okay, they put the information Amazon. Amazon is the king. Now, in order to attract customers and they don't care, okay, it is a public company, they will sell on loss. I had a customer, they bought from him the stuff and they were selling 20% less. He lost the business because Amazon was competing with him. And that's one of the, uh, the uh, gimmicks that Jeff Bezos was playing for a while. I don't know about the new chairman, he just started, but that's one of the reasons he left the company. Now, there is another uh, options here on Amazon is like between professional and individual accounts. Uh, you can go individual like the 99 cents, you know, per item, and it could be professional. It gives you a better image. Uh, the plan is better. Uh, it's still the same flat fee, but it's better off to show that you're really a store. You don't uh, work from the garage, but don't, no shame on the Amazon started from a garage or, or people get starting from the kitchen, but today image is important. Here, what I'm showing here, the plans what I mentioned before, individual 99 cents, item so, per item sold, 39.99. If you really want to show that you're really a store, spend the extra do few dollars and be professional. And of course, in each fee, as I mentioned before, there is a selling fees. Now, there is a table here that shows, uh, you know, how many items or you sell, for example, individual, you sell fewer than 40 items. They will not allow you on the visual uh, items to sell under 40, uh, under, uh, above, sorry, above 40 units, uh, because otherwise you compete with the 39.99. But you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's like a regular store. Uh, if you don't plan to uh, advertise on, um, on Amazon, it's okay, it's fine, because they don't take in consideration to, uh, your ads, that's why will be very low fee ads if you cannot spend $40. So not consider as a viable, uh, you know, vendor that will advertise on Amazon. Amazon needs the money, they need the advertising. Without this, they couldn't exist. Uh, so as in professional, you can see, you sell more than 40 items, you want to advertise, you want quality, uh, qualify for top placement. We'll talk about this later. You want to use advanced selling tools like APA, we'll talk about this later. And you want to sell products in restricted categories. There are certain items that you need a license to sell on Amazon, for example, toys, especially from babies to five years old. They have to uh, make sure that it went to the uh, special uh, lab that uh, you can uh, sell them, you know, to age one to five, for example. Everything was probably comes from China. The Chinese put right away one to five, but Amazon does not believe of this. They want to see certificates that it's really authorized by the authorities here that it's suitable for children. Now, 
I'm going through again, it may be a repeat, you know, this uh, slide, uh, but I summarize it for one reason, because you're going to get the copies of the slides. So you have a table, you know, organized uh, on the, all the feature for individual and professional and what club. So I'm going to skip it. This is more for information for your homework at home. Okay. There's another factor. You don't have to worry about this right now, but it's good to start to have a habit. There are two formulas, how to calculate, you know, uh, customer acquisition in e-commerce. Uh, this gives you indication really if you make money. Uh, if not, don't do it. Again, my recommendation, don't lose money. Okay. Now, as I mentioned in the very, very beginning, uh, a customer that looking to buy on Amazon, he will put the title, description, or keywords, one of them, short description, and he will have to get results. When you look at the item on Amazon, the results, you'll see there is a short listing. I don't show it. I can assume that everybody buys from uh, Amazon and you have uh, a short description. You have the price, if there are additional vendors, it will show you for the same item, which means the same ASIN. Amazon will never put different items on the top with different ASIN. In the bottom, you can see sometimes notes, people that bought these items bought also this item. This is for marketing purpose, but never on the top. What's really important for the SEO, under the price and uh, you know different vendors for the same ASIN, you'll see about this item. This is the key to the SEO on Amazon because this is a very short description about this item. Some people write a whole paragraph or they put long sentences. The search engines cannot pick it up. So I just picked up, I didn't check in all this, but you have to be short, precise, exactly to the keyword. If you want for, if you, for example, selling shoes, let's say leather shoes, and you want specifically to target on white shoes, the first item on this, about this item, the keyword should be white shoes and not shoes color white or whatever play around. The main keyword has to be in the beginning of the sentence. The same, it works on Google and B, and most of the uh, search engines, they go by the main keyword. Now, I want to talk about landing pages to Amazon store. When you search on Amazon, on uh, Google, a lot of times, and this is because Amazon has an agreement with uh, uh, Google to advertise good vendors that spend a lot of money on Google. You search for an item, you see the result, it's Amazon. You click, it goes to the Amazon store. This is costly because you have to pay what's called PPC, pay per click. Every time that a person comes to Google and click on your Amazon, okay, it costs money. When it's Amazon and alone, Amazon pays for it. But if it's your landing page, you pay for it because you pay Amazon pay per click. But the question is, what's better to have my own landing page or rely on Amazon? I can tell you the chances that you'll be in Amazon uh, Google list slim to nothing because you really have to be big and very expensive, you know, items. 
So you have to have landing pages. What is a landing page? It's a page that consists some information about your product, like in Amazon, okay? The price, uh, a picture, a video. Video is very beneficial today. Video is the king. And you put a link to Google, uh, to, uh, sorry, Amazon. So you bring traffic from this page. Now you can have a page in YouTube. You can have a, in YouTube, it's a video. And on the description, you can have a link. YouTube allow links, you know, on, on to any place that you want. And uh, all, all those are talking about suspending, you know, the uh, ability to put links. So don't want to, uh, you know, to uh, compete with Google. As a matter of fact, YouTube is owned by Google, but for the time being, you can put still this a long description, a full page with links to your website, to Google, to any place that you want, eBay, any place that you want. So you drive the traffic to your Amazon store. You can do the same thing with eBay. Again, I'm emphasizing now on uh, Amazon and not on eBay but you can link to any place on the internet. Now, I want to talk a little bit about sources, vendors. You open a store on a, or you're thinking about opening a store. For people that are not manufacturers or are not distributors, they don't have nothing. They said, I want to be in a business to sell on Amazon like anybody else. So where do you get the merchandise? The well-known wholesale in China is Alibaba. Alibaba is another Amazon, it's not Amazon, they have no affiliate in China, which has millions and millions of products, you name it from every industry, from fashion, from TV, from computers, everything. I can say that 95% of the people that work from their home or from their office, okay, they're bringing the stuff from Alibaba. Very competitive. Now here comes the private label. You can approach the vendor in Alibaba and ask for private label. Another advantage to work with Alibaba uh, vendors over there, very easy to get samples. Sometimes they will charge you for the shipping, sometimes for both, but at least you know what you are getting from them. I always recommend check the referrals of the vendors. They have the same review points. Make sure that is a reliable vendor. Is a vendor that sell on time. You don't want to buy something to, let's say to put the items for Christmas and the items will not be on time here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So make sure that you get a reliable vendor. Now, if you don't, because Alibaba is a wholesale, the minimum quantity, some items you can buy only five pieces, 10 pieces, 20 pieces, but for some people, maybe it's a lot. So you go to AliExpress and I wrote the address. AliExpress is a division of Alibaba and over there you can buy only one piece. You can buy one jacket. I'll just tell you a small story. Uh, this was two years ago. I was looking for down coat really 100, almost 100% 100 down. When you go into the department stores, uh, it costs three, 400, $500 and it's very hard to find down there's different restrictions here. And I said, I'll check on Alibaba, on Alibaba, on, excuse me, AliExpress, because I need only one code. I bought it in China for a hundred dollars, the same code that sends you for four hundred dollars. Okay, Macy's, Nostrum, whatever. And I'm so happy with this. I have I, I gave the referrals for friends I bought also. So I'm not saying everything is 100% China, but I always have in mind 
when you go to the stores here, yes, no matter what, if it's Staples or Macy's or the top stores in this country, everything that you touch is made in China. So it means you can buy it from China. It's cheaper because the store put markup of five, 10 times the cost to bring the item here and sell it. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you here, and you'll see it, at least where to find more resources. I had a store for about five years on Amazon with over 20,000 products for home decor. Where did I find them? I went to Javits Center one time to a show for home decor, and I met a vendor there that's selling home decor, wholesale in Chicago. I said, I want to put them on Amazon. Do you mind? He said, no, no problem. So I got, you know, the database. It took me really no time to upload it to Amazon. And I had a store with over 20,000 items on Amazon. Till I got somebody started to compete with me. He was working for 10%. Uh, I said, goodbye. I, I'm not working for 10%. And I closed it. I sold other items. Uh, but I didn't feel, you know, I want to, I, it just was for me an experiment. I didn't feel to be a merchant. I like to teach. I like to do programs. I'm a programmer. That's what I like to do. There are, if you check on the internet, you'll find on Google mainly or Bing, uh, also dedicated to Amazon and eBay stores. They advertise it that they are vendors for people to sell on Amazon eBay. Now, like you, other people are finding the same vendors, but at least it gives you an idea of what they're selling. You can try later on to import it from China and get better prices because the wholesale already paid the fees to bring it here as a profit. There's another line of business that it's also excellent for eBay and Amazon thrift stores. Uh, you'll be amazed how many people bring to thrift store brand new items that they didn't use them. And you can buy them like for nothing because the people bring them to just get, uh, you know, they do it for donation purpose. The manager of thrift stores have no idea what the value of the items. They just throw numbers there. You can buy it very cheap. I know a lot of people that walk to uh, thrift stores and buy stuff for cheap. There are thrift stores that um, they have good stuff. Maybe it's not good for you, but good for other customers on Amazon or eBay. Another way to do arbitrage. Arbitrage is a huge business in Amazon and also in eBay. I'll bring you a few examples. When you check an item on Amazon, for example, and I'll go back to the pencil, you see 10 cents a pencil, for example, you take your copy and paste the same description on eBay, you might find the same pencil for five cents or maybe 15 cents. A lot of people that sells on eBay, okay, they sell cheaper because of the reputation than Amazon. You can buy from eBay and sell it on Amazon. You can take the stuff from eBay, ship it direct to Amazon. Now, this is something that Amazon, I mean, at the time the Jeff Bezos didn't like the idea, but people are doing it because he always thought he must be the sole source. He doesn't want that you'll give business to eBay vendors, but that's part of the past. We don't know the future. Uh, we hope that the new chairman will not continue the same uh, tradition. Closeouts. There are many closeouts, cheap stores uh, that you can go to the owner of the store. Usually there's, there's one or two owners and they buy volume or again from China or from another store, you say, I want to have volume. You know, you sell this item, a dollar an item. Can you sell me for 50 cents if I'll buy a certain quality? 
And usually they are very, very responsive, those people. Everybody wants to sell. Surplus, returns, this is something became also very, very big. It's interesting, and I went there once, Amazon has a big warehouse here in Staten Island, which 10 minutes drive for any place in the island. And you'll see the container that is sitting outside with merchandise that was returned to Amazon. So don't even open the boxes that throw into the container. Now, the only things they do is they put them in pallets by weight. People are coming and buy them average $400, $450 per pallet. Sometimes a pallet can have 20, 25 computers, which 90% are working excellent. Sometimes you have to change a button or something, laptops, uh, everything for what people are buying on Amazon, you can find the computers. People walking to, the, to Amazon, say to the warehouse, they make an appointment with the manager. Usually you can't get them on the phone. They don't even publish them, although you can find the phone, they will never come to the phone. You go there, you tell the guard you want to talk to the manager and 99% he will say, okay, if not make an appointment because it's very hard to do it over the phone. And you ask them to sell you, you know, pallets. And usually also they do what's in the pallets. They have a manifest, they know what they have there and you can buy it very cheap. Sometimes you'll throw out 20% of them or you'll have to sell it on eBay as a used one. But in most cases, they are good items. It just they didn't like it. You know, I sometimes I buy. I'm not sure if I want it. I take it and send it back. But the, the item is even I didn't open it. It's in the box. I just changed my mind. Or, or I bought two, three items that are similar and I only used one. So don't worry about buying, you know, from pallets. You'll never lose. I never had about some, and I know a lot of people are doing it. And another way also is, I mentioned salvation, locate vendors in various commercial exhibitions. Like I mentioned before, uh, I went to a show, I met a company over there. Uh, today, there are no live shows. You can find them, all of them, you know, uh, virtual shows, or you can look for wholesalers on the internet, check if Amazon selling them and try to buy from them. You can always ask a vendor some also have a minimum quantity, a large quantity. You tell them, you explain it, you're just starting, you want to try it. And you'll find today, especially with the economy, uh, vendors are very, very responsive. Now, special sales in stores, what I mean? I met a person here, a guy in New Jersey. And he told me that he sells to Amazon in England, in France, because here they don't need him here locally. He said designer shirts for men, polo, whatever you name it. And he said in Europe, a shirt is $75 to $95. He sometimes goes to uh, Burlington or those discount store, which has, you know, designer stuff. He, he sent women that in different places, go to the stores because you can buy volume in one store. They buy those shares for 20 to $25 and sell it for $50. Plus the, the uh, Amazon or whoever in England pay for the shipping. So he makes profit almost 80, 90% by going special sales. Now, if you go for example, uh, to stores here, uh, and yeah, they have special sale or some close out, and they're brand new, never used, and you buy them, there's advantage to buy them and sell them, and I'll explain you why. It's a trick, but it's, uh, it's done, I know a lot of people are doing it. It doesn't cost you money, a penny. You go, like I mentioned, the shirts. You go and you organize 
a hundred shirts, okay? You can make $300, for example. Now, what happens if you don't sell the shirts or you just sell part of it? What do you do? You have 30 days to return it. So within 30 days, you bring it back to the store or to those people that collected the items, you pay them some fee and you don't lose a penny, you only make money because the law is that they have to, to give you 30 days to get it back. Now the items are brand new, they were in your storage or wherever, you know, you keep them and you just bring it back like any other, you know, merchandise that you bought. And this is a very profitable item. Uh, I know people here in Staten Island, they go to different stores and they buy all those bargains and they sell it. I know, I know one person makes $150,000 a year just running to two stores in Staten Island, buy stuff and sell it on Amazon or eBay. Next su subject is affiliate program. Affiliate program is like a commission agent. This is a very growing business. Uh, people are making six figures easy, uh, even high six figures by getting commission. Now, in order to do it, of course you need software to do it, which is not expensive to do it. Uh, or you do the landing pages. There are different ways to do it. You have to select a niche. For example, Amazon. You take items from your store or somebody else that you know is selling a lot of them, and you select items that really high value, and you load them to your page or your blog uh, or your video. Amazon will give you a code which is affiliate, it's very easy to register. Uh, they'll check your page, okay? Once you make one sale, if it's, they don't like it, they'll reject it, they'll not give you commission. But if you know what to do, you learn how to do it, and somebody does it for you, uh, when somebody buys from Amazon because he clicked on your page, you get commission. Now, again, I'm not going to do it personally against, you know, uh, Jeff Bezos, but Jeff Bezos does not like or didn't like that other people are making money. It used to be that average commission on Amazon was 7%. Today is 3 to 3.5%. They cut the commission about half a year ago. Before he knew that he is living, he did his part by cutting the commission. You can't see that people are making lot of money. I, I know people who made a million dollars in the commissions, but he cannot see it. He couldn't see it. And the new chairman, we don't know yet. Uh, the contents, of course, like SEO and something else, we'll talk about SEO a little bit later. You have to optimize the contents in order to find you on Google. Because from Google, it will go to Amazon. Now, you can put in this page or in this site, uh, banks, financial institutions, mortgage, you know, they put in the site advertisements. So it's not just advertising for Amazon. You can advertise other people, credit cards. When you know that people are looking for mortgages and you see the internet is full with advertising, today is 1%. 2%, APR, whatever is this, you know, it's attracting people. You can put the ad. Every time you make a click, you get money. Amazon will pay you only if they sell the items, but other affiliates like travel agents, uh, they all pay commission right away. Every month, some, some of them are every two weeks, they pay you the commission. And usually their commission is 10 to 12%, which is more normal than the 3% or 4%. Now, doing also uh, the affiliate program, or the landing pages, you put a, a little form into your building, 
and you try to build the email list. I didn't mention it, but there is a one known done deals, then deals, D-A-N deals.com. The guy started from the kitchen. He's still in the kitchen with his wife. He makes $600,000, $700,000 a year in commission between Amazon, travel agents, uh, banks, you name it, okay? He sends twice a day, sometimes three times a day, emails with links to his affiliate pages. You can check it on the internet. You can subscribe and see what you are getting. It's very easy, just subscribe and you get his emails. Now, how to find, to, uh, to find, to become your affiliate commission agent, okay? You need, now, you open a store, for example, in Amazon. One of the biggest mistakes that people are doing is that they are not finding affiliates to run the store. Amazon, when they started the business, the first years they had 6,000 affiliates. So advertising, they were advertising, they were looking for, six, for affiliates. At that time, they were paying 15 to 18% commission. Now those commission agents brought in the business. And you know, like any, any other business, you need an agent. You need somebody to travel to customers. You do it online. You have an affiliate, he's your agent. He's promoting your pages. He's promoting your products and it's for free. Why? Because you don't pay the comm commission. Amazon pays them from their profit, the big profit, let's call it, uh, they pay the commission. So you don't suffer any loss, who cares? So the minute you have, I'm not talking about the 40 items, but if you have more than 40 items, you can put ads on uh, craiglist.com, other newspapers, uh, Facebook groups, there's tons of, uh, Facebook groups, okay, um, for affiliates. You just search affiliates on uh, Facebook, you find a lot, a lot of them. I'll not say hundreds, but at least a hundred. Uh, you can check blogs that they have affiliates. You send an email to the blog owner that you see there's no competition with you. Let's say the blog is about uh, tickets for airlines selling insurance, flight insurance, or whatever. So there's a lot of opportunities to work with another bloggers and advertise with them. Um, there is another way to do it by having your own and advertising Google, but you're talking about spending money. If you're a beginner, I'll say, work with other people, work with the social media doesn't cost to advertise, not to advertise costs money, but to participate in uh, groups on, uh, on Facebook or Twitter and stuff like this. And I want to show you a live, I mean, it's not live, it's virtual, but I copied from Amazon, a sample of a website. The website called, for example, Wolf by Today. It's a nice name, it's trying to promote items that you should or recommending to buy today. You can see links to different social media. Okay, the, the same post goes to social media. Okay, he, he puts the image, okay. Oops, it's a Canon wide angle lens, okay. He has a short description, okay. He has the price, 199.99. And he has a link to Amazon store. And this is the way it looks on Amazon store. The same item in Amazon store. When somebody clicked on the link that I showed before, he will come to this page. You can see the description that I talked before, okay? You'll see here the, uh, the stars. He has five stars. He has the good rating. He has the price. And once somebody buys as a result of this click, he will make the three or four percent, the two hundred, one ninety nine ninety nine. If you have a lot of customer and you need this item, it's a prime, uh, will be promoted. There is a chance that a lot of customers will buy this uh, product. 
a rough calculation, easy to make $200 a day as an affiliate. I don't want to go into details, I don't have time for it, but it's easy. Just few good items that Amazon is promoting on Amazon, okay, or as a prime. A prime day is opportunity to make money because people will click on the items on the prime because of the prices. Everything I talked about the affiliates, there's a special page on Amazon, which it's, you sign up for Amazon Associate. Amazon Associate is the, the main affiliate, okay? You associate your affiliate. I put the link to affiliate program, and this is the image of the first page. Very easy to fill it. It's just a form, and like I mentioned before, you get uh, approval right away. Okay, it's a temporary approval. It's maybe 10, takes five, 10 minutes, but you will not get commission unless Amazon checked your page. And this will be checked only after the first order. Sometimes you might reject, sometimes you'll get a commission. Another issue we talked about more Till now, more about text all the time. You know, we put text, we put keywords, we put description and everything. Video marketing is the king today. People don't like to read. People want to watch video. That's one of the reasons of YouTube success. And that's the reason you Google bought in on YouTube because people like to watch YouTube. I know if I want to fix something and I like to be handyman sometimes, I want to know how to fix it. I go to YouTube and you'll find information with video how to fix it. Uh, YouTube became the second search engine on the internet. You'll be surprised that many things that even text that you search on uh, Google, you'll find them on Google with video, better you know, explanation a live uh, explanation and people like it instead of reading it. Now, Amazon, once you're a qualified store, okay, and you, you uh, build a reputation with uh, Amazon, so don't tell you when, but if you sell, you know, a nice quality of items and you get a good five, four or five stars, Amazon will allow you to put a video, a short clip and I'm sure when you look at the items today, uh, you'll see you have three, four images, small images under the product picture. You can click and see a larger image. The last one is the video, which is very important to see the video, to see the item live running, although it's no big deal. It's just dancing a little bit the animation, but it's a video, people like it. The same thing, video, the same videos that people put on Instagram, they put in LinkedIn, they put in e-commerce website. Um, people don't move without video. A big part of the country, especially in the United States, but all over the world, they have an iPhone or any smartphone. They have a video, they take themselves videos, there are programs, there are apps, they pro they, uh, they edited it, it maybe it's not a hundred percent professional, but it's something to show to customers. The other item that I forgot for a second, I went blank before. I want to talk about the other e-commerce. Shopify. Shopify, is, this is like a central, you know, vendor central that you can see they have over a million points in a business worldwide. They do for you the store, okay? So don't, you don't ship through them, you don't do anything. They're so just administrating your store. And they also do some marketing, some cost money if you want, you want to, uh, to have advertising. But what's good with Shopify, they can direct your merchandise to Amazon some people say they swear by it, that it helps to rank on Amazon. 
I don't believe so. I didn't see any proof. But it's easy way. Once you have a lot of items, you administrate it to Shopify. It's also not expensive. It's $30, $40 a month. And it's a good store to handle your merchandise. As you can see here on uh, Shopify, they have a special section, start selling on Amazon with Shopify. Now, I left, we have now, but it's, we have another 15 minutes. I want to have also some questions to hear if some people have. Uh, do I have more time or I have to stop 11.30? Nobody answer. Okay, I'll continue now. Few things to discuss. People ask questions a lot of times. Should I sell on Amazon? Only both, only eBay. It's all depend. If you have high ticket items, I will say Amazon and eBay. I sometimes am surprised that people put you know jewelry worth five hundred dollars a piece on eBay or a thousand dollars. But people take a chance. There is there is insurance, but it's not insured like Amazon. eBay is not favor, you know, uh, not customers and not vendors. They're neutral, but it's, if you have a complaint, they'll find any way to challenge you, not to refund you the money, eBay. So I will not put expensive items, but some people have good private insurance, they do it. But the recommendation always, try both. Why not? It doesn't cost a lot of money. Now, the another question I'm being asked, John, do we have any more time? Yes, you have some time. And okay. there's a question here that somebody is asking too. Yes. Uh, the question that they are asking is, what are your thoughts on self-publishing on Amazon? Publishing is excellent, uh, excellent item. But today, you know, the, everything is digital. I, People that sell, you know, you know, books, will publish books, they're not great today because people buy the digital version. You know, a book, a hard copy is $20 or $30. Digital is $7, $9. That's a difference. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let me continue now. One of the questions I've been asked a lot, should I open my own store online? If you have the funds, if you have the tools to run SEO, to run the store, why not? You have to, to remember, nothing is safe when you have your merchandise by somebody else. If tomorrow, I will not say Amazon will go out of business, but if tomorrow for some mistake to suspend you, you're left with nothing because you have no store. You might have merchandise that you'll have to sell it for nothing just to get rid of it. So it's always recommended for the long run to have your own store. Hopefully you'll make a lot of money in Amazon. You'll have the funds to open your own store and advertise it just to offer you another channel of selling items. Uh, technical requirements. You really don't need much, but it's it's involved a lot of learning, a lot of uh, experience, you know, practicing. But you learn like anybody else. Uh, today, even colleges are offering courses in digital marketing. I see a lot of advertising from Columbia, from uh, NYU. I saw Rutgers. They all have professors uh, that are teaching, you know, digital marketing. They will not teach you specifically how to sell on Amazon, but at least, but at least they will give you how to market information or teach you how to market in our digital area. You know, uh, uh, it, it just, it helpful. And I saw those courses are not so expensive comparing to college, you know, fees, a $1,400, $2,000, uh, 
uh, in a course of 12 months, 14 months. I recommend it if you don't have the, uh, the knowledge. Uh, there is one problem to look on the internet for knowledge. A lot of people are answering you know, the questions or advertise on, uh, on, uh, on Amazon. They're not qualified to answer. They, they, so salespeople, they either they give an answer from their sales experience or they read some book or something that the information is not true. A lot of times they're not updated. I spend every day at least two hours reading information that connected to group to be up to date. And when I came here, I worked today, yesterday to prepare up-to-date slides. Like I said, although I had it for a few months, I had to update them because things change. Uh, okay, changes of being suspended on Amazon, I mentioned before. Now, I also mentioned before, Amazon might compete with your products. Today, I hope we'll have more control that Amazon will not price if you sell, for example, on Amazon, that they want to sell your products and undercut you on Amazon. Uh, I would say, say no, I have clients and, I, and what, if suggestions still come. Mm -hmm. Say no, you want to sell on your own. Uh, what, the, what else should learn for becoming an Amazon or eBay vendor? Like I said, there are college qualified, you know, uh, courses uh, that at least to understand the wisdom behind the digital, you know, digital, I go back to my time that I learned electronics. Okay. In my time was analog, just like they want to start a digital. Digital is a language that consists of one and zero. If you want for, to, for example, to uh, write the number 10, as you, you, you write uh, one, zero, zero, one, one, for example. That's what the computer knows. Computer doesn't know to read letters or characters. They like to read digits, numerical digits. And in order to understand the algorithm, that's a lot of time I have, you know, uh, arg not arguments, but, you know, debates with people that are not really professional that tell me, but the algorithm showed this and this and this. I say, it's your algorithm. Look, at the coding, the coding is not according to the digital, digital language. So you have to have some basics on the digital language, how to communicate with the computer. There is a reason when you make enter on the keyboard that you give a command or you end something, a paragraph that's all digital, zero, one, zero, whatever is the code. Okay. There's another subject that is very interesting. You know, you can hire somebody, it's not cheap, but today there are so many programs and information which you don't have to worry about the quality. They're all good. How to produce a digital video. I would say that every product that you want to sell on Amazon or eBay on your own, you, you know, uh, website, two, three videos, five videos on YouTube and on your website. I have a client for skincare. I put for every, they have three main products. Every product has a five, six videos and we change and we add every month more videos, more ranking. More videos is more ranking. They love videos. So if you don't want to spend money because it's expensive to uh, contract in you know, a video, today you can produce a video on your desktop based on slides, based on images, you do animation, you a little bit, you know, uh, bring life to the video and you don't have to shoot in the studio or in the street over there. So I would recommend whatever you do, make sure in the near future, you attach videos. I will allow now to have some questions if there's any questions i think you've answered the ones that the people have uh, right now uh, morty um i i'd like to just uh, thank everybody for coming today and uh, being a part of this 
anytime you listen to these webinars, it's difficult to catch and grab everything that, that uh, is being said. It's why one of the things we're doing is we're going to be sending you these slides so that you can refer back to them. And in addition, uh, Morty will make himself available if you call and uh, try to answer some of your questions. Uh, it, the slide you're looking at right now is the last slide that you'll be getting. And uh, you'll see on there uh, how to contact SCORE, you have we, our website, our telephone number, email, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're available should you need us uh, to get further information about this. I see there is something that came through on a chat down here, Morty. Let me just see if there's something we could help them with. I just want to add something. I mean, one of the reasons I like always to give the slides, I'm not worried about somebody copying them. I do it for years. Uh, my recommendation is when you come home tonight, tomorrow, when you're still fresh with the information, go to the slides uh, if you want planning to open a store and to learn, uh, make notes, uh, search in you know, Amazon, look how it looks in Amazon, especially the items I mentioned uh, to look at Amazon and it will refresh your mind, you'll keep it. It will stay with you. If you just come home and you leave it after a week, it's gone. Morty, someone was kind enough to say that this was amazing. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, really. It's my passion to teach. I love it. Oops, wait a minute. Another question is popping up here. Hold on. Uh, no, it's just another thank you, Morty. Oh, okay. Two more thank, thank you. yous. Everybody is welcome. I really appreciate it. Okay, so again, if you have any, you'll have the slides to refer to. I know everybody didn't absorb everything that was said today. You'll have a video that you'll be able to see on our website, this, uh, this recording of this session. And you'll be able to contact the SCORE and uh, through SCORE you can get to Morty and ask him directly any questions you might have concerning the Amazon uh, uh, and other uh, uh, selling tools, okay? And by the way, I want just to add, I mentioned before, sorry for take time. Uh, I don't know if everybody here is from Staten Island, but like I mentioned, 10 minutes from many places in the island, there's Amazon, huge warehouse, it's expanding. I think now they have over a thousand employees over there. It's amazing to make an appointment just to visit, to understand the volume that Amazon is shipping from the warehouse, all the robotic equipment, the automation, it's amazing. It's, it's good to have an idea why Amazon is so big. As a side note, uh, I am a member of uh, the Staten Island Rotary Club. And we have worked out a program with Amazon they wind up getting all of these returns that you mentioned. Yes. And we wind up getting many of those returns on pallets. We don't even know what we're getting. <laughs> okay. And we wind up uh, distributing them to people who have to uh, people who are in need. Okay. So, so uh, it's uh, as you pointed out earlier, it's, it's easier for them to just get rid of this stuff than to try to put them back on the shelf. And most of the time, these are good working items. I'm telling you, I know, I know from other people, 95% are good. Unless somebody bought some mechanic, some, some item that broke it or whatever. But nothing wrong with clothing, nothing wrong with shoes. 90% of the items, you can use them, sell it, whatever you want to do. It just, the people, I know when my wife needs something, Address is not true, not from Amazon, but she buys fuel and then she sends it back, you know, whatever she doesn't like. That's the benefit of free shipping. 
Well, we can continue on and talk about some of these other things, but people have other things they need to get to today. So I yes. thank everyone for attending, being a part of this. Morty, thank you so much for You're being welcome. a part of it today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. Yes. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye.